Hey comrades, so this is December 26. I'm in San Ignacio in the hotel La Huerta and I've decided today to do a push to uh, La Paz, skip uh, Be, uh, Bahia de Concepcion and uh, Aqua Verde. I've been to those last year. So I may as well push to a campground, well not campground, some satellite spots that I've researched, four of them, north east of La Paz and it's probably gonna be about nine hour drive. So I've pretty much packed. I'm kind of keeping rods and fishing gear in the inside here rather than the pod because never know, could be fishing. Just too much of a climb uh, there. And uh, these ridges here, here, I'll show. This is how I hold when I climb. I step on the wheel there, but it's a little bit uncomfortable like they're not super sharp but they're squared so probably gonna when i come back to candle line it with something soft and just so a better grip anyway it's big climber so i keep it at the side now and of course lots of californian license plates everywhere here in the motels like san ignacio probably has like uh, five or six motel hotels and uh, it's kind of like in between the Sea of Cortez and Pacific Ocean. That's why uh, lots of little stops here, RV parks and so on. Kind of like a middle ground. But yeah, let's hit the road. So this is the center of San Ignacio. Very typical uh, Mexican town. Uh, so in the middle there is usually a church and also the square where people hang out in the evenings mariachi playing all that like it's actually happening in small towns but uh, cool culture is preserved look at this rig not sportsmobile but oh, i think jacked up higher than me <laughs> it's definitely heavy duty version this is definitely very typical old school preserved uh, little town out there in the farmlands, in the countryside. Actually spend a little bit of time uh, in the shop near a hotel, uh, bought tons of salsa, tons of uh, refried beans, some corn, we got tortillas, soft tortillas, uh, some indio, which is rare find, usually Ticari or Modelo around here. Um, yeah, ju just a few supplies like this. So basically for food, food wise, I'm packed for a week. I don't need to stop anywhere. I spent probably 60 bucks. I also got like a little bit of Mexican jerky to try, never tried that before. Uh, yeah, most of it is, was just food, so yeah, like 60 bucks. But then again, this is not uh, a big supermarket chain, it's just a little town supply shop. So I probably overpaid like 10, 15 bucks, but it is what it is. Who knows when the next big market is gonna be, I have no idea. This is actually the first grocery shopping I had to do on this trip, like actual real shopping. Uh, because um, mainly Rodden, like Rod and his wife, they were cooking. Uh, I just like pitched in once for um, uh, some resupply, some cheese, 
that uh, we stored a little bit of that food in my fridge but other than that yeah very cooked and I just used noodles whatever and some other time it was me gathering stuff and eating that was kind of my dinner yeah I also caught myself thinking you know what I'm not really afraid of driving alone in Bach anymore <laughs> like second time around plus talking again with more people meeting people it's just like yeah people can travel in different years it is like and like mainland Mexico, it's super safe here, super safe. There is, there are American, some American cities that are way, way more dangerous to be in in some neighborhoods or areas than here. Uh, mainland, yeah, it's a little different. Like Rod was telling me, there is, for example, in Sonola, Sonola province or Sonolola or something like that. There's like, for example, uh, like banditos, cartels, they paint cars like police cars and they basically stop people for, um, you know, pay out. Uh, so, like, you, you don't even know, they even wear a uniform, a uh, police uniform. So you, ju you just don't know if you're getting a real here or not. Uh, but generally, as a gringo still, people tend to not want to deal with you and attract attention. Uh, but as a Mexican, he was saying, in Mexico, yeah, no one cares, no one cares. Oh yeah, there is also another reason for me to get to La Paz, is I need oil change. Uh, I could do it in one of the smaller towns, but I figured they probably have a Ram dealership uh, or, you know, it's a big enough city, uh, so there are good shops probably in there. Because uh, my oil life, let's see, uh, 41%, so I tend to do oil change, no, uh, when oil life, no, no, more, no less than uh, 30%. Uh, you know, maybe I don't have to, sure, some people can argue that, but engine is important, engine's working hard, the car is loaded all the time, uh, I don't want to take chances, I want to take care of my engine, I want to make sure I have not just engine, differentials, um, transmission, well transmission is a long as I can, K range, but differentials I do in half time of what's required if I wait till official time, uh, what is it, like 30,000 kilometers uh, usually, uh, it's, uh, it's already like all black and stuff, uh, that's what happened last time, and since then I'm like, you know what, half time, at most, uh, maybe at uh, uh, like 60, 65%, maximum 70%, I absolutely need to do uh, a, a fluid change on the rear differentials. We got ourselves in front of us a typical snowbirds coming here. And the license plate, let's see, I think it's California. Yeah. Okay, I'm approaching coast. It's gonna be some good views. San Ignacio, as you come to the coast, right down, uh, it's actually, it, it looks nice, but uh, there is some kind of a landfill here, it's extremely dirty, there's like garbage flying just pretty much everywhere, like, uh, yeah, some kind of heavy industry dump thing, so just be, be, be prepared, it's not, uh, it's not pretty. <music>
entered Mulch, it's quite a nice little town. There are a couple of camp spots, uh, official ones on the beach. Uh, there are a couple of RV spots here as well. That's so why you probably pay like 10, 20 dollars. Uh, Canadian, yeah, no US, US probably. Right here, by here the Concepcion or Bay the Conce uh, of Conception. Now this here is very good campground, like very very good. Or actually no, here Playa Santipac. Gonna well, I'm not gonna stop now, but you basically right away from road descend down here. There's like tons of RV uh, RVs parked around here. And then around the cliff here, with a little, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, estuary here, is a place for like van lifers, you know, like smaller rigs. It's very, very nice boy, bay. I'm gonna be skipping it. There's tons of Ireland spots here. Well, I'm still driving to La Paz today, but on the way north, right, because I'm gonna be returning back, uh, Depending where I am, where I start, and where I want to end up, and timing, I want to camp out around these spots here, whatever they are. Mexican jerky comes with a little Valeria sauce. Every jerky in the package seems to come with the sauce. I don't know why, um, but the beef is actually tasty. Just try it, very, very dry, but very tasty. The price is 200 pesos to enter this place, I think. Or maybe we stayed for free. Tons and tons of RVs. I think snowbirds here anchor down for like a good month at least every winter. Big, big expensive rigs. But very cheap living here. They can totally, like you can totally, like in RV here parked, you can live probably off like 500 bucks like a king all month, just being parked. There is uh, also a little uh, bar kind of restaurant, so that's kind of nifty that they camp. And you can actually go over uh, eat some good stuff. The water here is uh, is almost like turquoise kind of thing, it's, it's almost like Caribbean. This is totally gringo place. It is it is very nice. Like if I had time I wouldn't mind sticking around here for like a good uh, couple of weeks. Ah, still cold for my liking. People come here with yachts. You can probably uh, take a tour from uh, around here. Uh, like uh, maybe see uh, whales or something like that. Well, time to go see that area over there. The beach here is a little bit rockier. Like when that main place over there. It's definitely not secluded bay, but it's 
so good. I'm actually contemplating maybe I, I should stay here today. And this is this estuary. It's kind of like uh, tons and tons of mangroves over here. I highly doubt there is any clams or anything like that. But we did do fishing here last time. And uh, me and Brett <coughs> caught quite a big, like uh, almost to the elbow, two fishes. We'll continue. Uh, I'll right, show you a nice spot, come uh, here. So th this guy is from Ontario. He is with this giant RV towing this little car behind. And uh, what's where I come from? That's the kind of weather we have. Wow, <laughs> it's definitely well BC also like that. Uh, <laughs> except I prefer not to go to both places. I stick around yeah. Vancouver. <laughs> That's the only snow I want to see this year. <laughs> yeah. So you sn snowboarding uh, the whole winter? Yes. Yeah. Are you retired now? Yes. Well, it makes sense. Uh, Why would you stay in Canada being retired in the winter time? Uh, exactly. Look it at does this. make sense. <laughs> and yeah, like once you parked and you have a little car, you go shopping, it's like you could yeah, live off like, like 200 yeah. bucks a month. Yeah, pretty much. Exactly. It's cheap. What's your name, by the way? John. John. The more I talk to you, the more I'm tempted to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> I guess today I was going to get to La Paz, but I really like this spot, it's a really good spot, so, and it's sun sunshine, probably for an hour, what, three, four hours probably yeah, still? Yeah, three, three or four hours, yeah. Yeah, to yeah. actually enjoy, not to ride like super late somewhere. Change of plans, I decided to stay. <laughs> I feel like drinking beer and chilling. I still have at restaurant food, uh, those two cocktails, I haven't finished one from uh, Guerra Negro from yesterday, but they're in my uh, thermos uh, food container, so they're just fine, they're probably still cold. Oh, finally deployed. After all, this is supposed to feel like vacation. As the guy at previous campground was saying, you know, do you really need to push to Cabo? You're just gonna get disappointed pretty much compared to some of the secluded places over here. And uh, I completely agree, I kind of wanna just camp like this at different places. Uh, but it will be, I, f I feel like if I return to Canada and I haven't been second time to Cabo, it's gonna be like a thorn in my butt. It's gonna bug me for a while. I would, I would be like regretting. Like, And plus, I want to see what the place looks like, like for example, what if I want to fly there one day, right? Just hotel or something. Uh, I gotta see for myself, but uh, still, even, uh, well, it's just I'm trying to uh, uh, kind of do that, but I also want to visit uh, Bahia de Tartuga, which is that kind of like peninsula out of this peninsula on the Pacific side. And it's quite a bit of long drive over there. It's, it's all green, it's supposed to be part of that preserve, so it should be beautiful. But, uh, ooh, wind. Somehow I need to incorporate it on the way back, possibly. And because I'm staying here today, I'm basically gonna skip this place on the way out. Ah, nothing like chilling in a tailgate of a pickup truck. If I, in the future, in like five years or something, decide to go for a van and I have money possibly to switch to Unimog, definitely gonna miss this handy tailgate platform. I totally see why there is actually a term tailgating. Cheers. Best dark beer in Mexico. Just overall, very awesome. India, it's awesome. Those guys are from Ontario. These guys are from Golden, BC. Uh, they're in the f with a family, they're camping out, well, they're renting in Loreto, but they came in this truck, so it's like two retired guys, kind of, and uh, small kids. Kudos to BCC guys. This whole idea with mesh on the roof, I absolutely dig it. I, like initially I was kind of upset when I saw it, but this is like third time I'm using it as a deck. And the views from up high so much uh, are absolutely awesome all the time. So thank you guys for doing a good job. Alright, check out this place from above.
was perfect timing, the tide went out, low tide, I don't know how low, it's probably still stuck with uh, full moon, well moon is declining now, but that's where strongest low tides are, and I'm like, well there are many shells here, and in such a public place like this, it doesn't, it wouldn't seem like there is much, but I just went in there, not on the shore here, just walked. Because walking in there, up to maybe uh, here, and you can go like where my finger is pretty much. Like way, way over there. It's very shallow. And no effort whatsoever here. You just position your hand like a rake, and scoop, nothing. Scoop, oh, something. And just keep going. They're right on the surface, just maybe below sand, about this much. Tons of them, like tons of them. Uh, like zero effort, pretty much. No effort whatsoever. A very perfect, like, soup cooking club. So I think I still have uh, miso soup somewhere, packets. So I'm gonna do miso soup clams right now. Check this out. So some of the bigger ones are about this size. There are two kinds. There is this kind here and whatever these are. So yeah, well actually yeah, this is representative of one of the biggest and quite a few of them. Some were actually just sitting on the surface, really. So that's for a big pot, for lots of soup, they'll open up, it's gonna be easy to reach. Awesome. Continuing to watch Romanovs. Clams are cooking away in miso soup broth. I added a few spices over there and some garlic salt. And this is gonna be delicious. These are majority of clams in this area. This is what they look like. Surface of this uh, kind of clam is very interesting. It's almost like um, it's not uh, hard. It almost got like little hairs on the outside. It feels like a suede material, kind of. Yeah, this is gonna be awesome. It's a big, big pot. See you guys tomorrow in the next episode. Hey comrades, don't forget to hit that like button and also leave a comment. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you should by hitting that subscription button and also bell notification next to it. So you can actually get my video updates, both in notification and your video feed. And as well, you can support this channel if you like my videos through PayPal or Patreon in the links down below or just after this video.